Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Today is the return of the Premier League Predictors series. The series where you guys send in your predictions, I give my predictions and give a little lowdown slash breakdown of what I think is going to happen in the weekend's Premier League games. This weekend, if you haven't seen my last video, then well, it was uploaded at 8.30 in the morning yesterday, which is a very different upload schedule to my usual routine. Jose Mourinho is now the manager of Tottenham Hotspur. I think of all of the clubs in the Premier League that I wouldn't expect Mourinho to ever become the manager of, having seen him join my club in when I was like 9, 10 years old, it was Tottenham. But he is now the manager of Spurs. It's a crazy thing. And the first game this week is West Ham versus Tottenham. So we'll go into that in a second. But for the last game week, if we can refresh our memories all the way back to two weeks ago, it was long, wasn't it? But we're back now. So hit the like button on this video. Premier League football has returned. And subscribe if you haven't already. I've said that twice already at the start of this video. So I should probably stop with the trying to get subscribers thing and get back to the content. So the last time out, I managed to get 10 points, which was one correct score which was Newcastle's victory and I'm getting quite good at predicting Newcastle results when they win so this week hopefully the Newcastle fans will be hoping that I predict them to win their game this week but those of you guys who entered these were the best entries from last week on the screen right now and of course your points for the top points will be on the screen throughout the entire video when I'm giving my predictions so Match number one is West Ham versus Tottenham. Manuel Pellegrini is under a bit of pressure as well at West Ham. We should probably talk about them first because I think we'll be talking about Spurs for a while. Pellegrini's under pressure because West Ham's recent results and performances just haven't been good enough. He was given last season and, you know, people expected more than what West Ham delivered, which I think is like a generic thing with West Ham's fan base now. They pretty much expect each season to be better than the last one because they underperform and underachieve. And then all of a sudden it's just ah well mid table again which I'm more than happy with as a Chelsea fan but West Ham need results and Jose Mourinho taking over at Spurs on Wednesday is probably the worst thing that could happen because whether Tottenham players are sad that Pochettino has left or not there will be a buzz and there will be an excitement once Spurs fans and players have got over this oh wow suddenly we've got a brand new manager and it just happens to be Jose Mourinho once everyone's got over that which by the way, if they start winning football matches, they'll be over it in almost an instant. It wouldn't be the first time in football that a brand new manager has come into a club who is struggling and all of a sudden, like click of a finger, everything seems to be fixed. Spurs, whether I like them, love them, hate them or whatever, I think we all know what the real answer to that question is. They've got some great players and as a Chelsea fan, first and foremost, a football fan just as much, I've got to say it, they've got some absolutely brilliant players. They got to the Champions League final last season. All of a sudden, all of these players don't just forget how to play football. There was definitely a rift going on behind the scenes. The relationship was supposedly strained at Spurs with Pochettino as the manager. So I think it was inevitable at some stage that he was going to leave or be sacked. Did not expect it to be just before the end of this international break, especially with Mourinho taking over. So if we look at what Mourinho is going to bring Spurs, he is going to make them more resolute at the back. They are going to be much more solid defensively. They're not going to ship in so many goals. Not that they've really been conceding bucket tons anyway, it's just they've not been getting results. And even though Jose Mourinho, in his last two managerial jobs at both Chelsea and Man United respectively, sacked in the third season, I do feel as though Spurs will definitely 100% finish higher than their current league standing. So as for my prediction for this game, going to go West Ham nil, Spurs Two. I think Mourinho will get a victory in his first game. Probably expect Harry Kane to bag them both. So the second fixture, let's talk about Spurs' North London rivals. Arsenal versus Southampton. Three o'clock kickoff at the Emirates. I don't really see much other than a routine home victory for Arsenal. Southampton, performances have got a little bit better since that horrible defeat to Leicester. I don't think it's going to be anywhere near that level. Arsenal have got problems of their own. Let's not just let the fact that Spurs have sacked their manager to cloud over the fact that there is another club in North North London, who a lot of the Arsenal fans want Unai Emery to go. If he doesn't get a result at home to Southampton, you wouldn't be too surprised if all of a sudden Arsenal follow suit and copy their rivals and go and sack their manager. And just imagine they approach Maurizio Pochettino to take over at Arsenal. The Premier League, honestly, I've seen it all now. Nothing would surprise me. Who knows? As for my prediction, I'm going to go with Arsenal 2, Saints 0. So the next game is Bournemouth versus Wolves. Wolves are starting to shoot up the table after a dodgy start to the season. They're currently in 8th place in the table. 
one place ahead of Bournemouth, who are ninth. Bournemouth is the home team, but Wolves really impressed me. And recently, they've stopped drawing as many games, and they've started to win a couple more, where, as before, they were kind of just getting draws, and we were all kind of just, you know, they haven't lost many games, so everyone was kind of not really taking Wolves into consideration for anything. But their form is improving, and I think they're going to go to Bournemouth and get a result here. I'm going to say Bournemouth 1, Wolverhampton Wanderers Two. So Brighton versus Leicester. Brighton have won three of their last five games since losing to Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, whereas Leicester are on a four-game winning streak. So this is actually a game between two teams in relatively good form. Leicester are really looking like they are contenders this season, at minimum for a top four spot. Their form, no one can argue with it. If we're talking about a title race that we did speak about earlier on during the international break, there is no disrespect that can be left for Leicester City. They are well and truly in the race as much as anyone else at this point and I think they'll go to Brighton which will not be an easy game considering Brighton are playing some really good football at the moment under Graham Potter and I think Leicester will get the win but yet again it'll be the same scoreline as Wolves going to go with Brighton 1, Leicester 2. Crystal Palace versus Liverpool. We all remember the story where Liverpool crumbled a three goal lead at Selhurst Park to draw 3-3. Subsequently a few other things happened that we won't mention because well we'd rather just take the Michael Owen out of Spurs today I think and this week after sacking Pochettino but Liverpool gave the title away that season and that Crystal Palace result was just as important as any other game. They go to Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace have kind of dipped out of form recently, they went to Chelsea, didn't look very good at all. Wilfred Zaha, we all know where he is, he's still stuck in Rhys James's pocket but I'd advise Rhys James just to let him out to hope that Crystal Palace can spoil the Liverpool runaway party. Jurgen Klopp's side are currently running away with the Premier League table. With Manchester City City and Chelsea to play. We'll get into that prediction in a moment. That is going to be a tasty one. This is a big game for Liverpool. It's a side that they quite often struggle against away from home. And Crystal Palace are a side that could potentially be a banana skin for them. I say the same about Palace whenever they play one of the big boys, that they could be a banana skin. But let's not take anything away from Liverpool. They're playing some great football. They did deserve to beat Manchester City. They won pretty comfortably. The scoreline 3-1. I don't think it's going to be as comfortable at Crystal Palace. I expect it to be a similar game to that one at Bramall Lane where Liverpool managed to take away a one goal win and I think this one will be the same they'll win by a one goal margin I'm going to say Palace nil Liverpool one getting closer to that Chelsea game so Norwich City a bottom of the table and they travel to Everton on one of the three o'clock kickoffs this week an Everton side who are now out of the bottom three but this is the kind of game where if Everton don't win this one, you can expect to see Silver potentially sacked as well. The sacking season has started. I haven't quite got Christmas trees up yet, but the sacking season has well and truly begun. And if Everton don't win this game at home to Norwich, Silver will probably go as well. But the thing with Norwich is Pukki stopped scoring. We didn't think, we were told that, you know, they had so many good players. And I said it myself. I thought Norwich were going to be safe after seeing their early season form. Eat a slice of humble pie. They're pretty awful at the moment. And I don't see them getting a result with Goodison. Going to go with Everton 3, Norwich 1. A consolation goal for Timu Puki. He did make it to the Euros with Finland though. That's pretty cool. Anyway, Watford versus Burnley. Watford, massive turning point for them in that Friday night kickoff two weeks ago when they managed to win at Carrow Road. I think this form is going to start to turn for Watford now. They are off the bottom. They're in 18th in the table. Burnley got another very good result against West Ham, winning 3-0 at Turf Moor. They're currently sitting bang in the middle of the table. And their recent form, they've lost three out of their last five, and I think they'll make it four out of their last five by losing this one. I think it's going to be Watford 2, Burnley 0. I think Watford are going to go on a decent run of form now, and I think they'll get a 2-0 win in this one and keep flying up the table. Maybe not flying, just like easing their way out like double-decker bus. Uh, maybe not a bus, just, just a standard car. <sighs> this is the one that we have all been waiting for. Manchester City versus Chelsea. Forget Mourinho, he's had enough airtime on the channel. We had a dedicated video to him yesterday. Dedicated video a couple of months ago when he made some comments about Chelsea. It's now the game that is a massive, massive game. The biggest one, the biggest test of Frank Lampard's managerial career. And it's also a huge game for Pep Guardiola. The majority of videos on this channel, as you guys will probably know, are very heavily Chelsea focused. I'm a Chelsea fan. This is the majority of a Chelsea channel. But I've got to look at it from an unbiased perspective as the Premier League predictions often are. This is not going to be easy. If you look at Manchester City's form after they've lost the match, they come back and whoop teams quite substantially. 
Chelsea don't want to be in that category, but if we are not on our game, we could be. Defensively this season, yes, we've got better, but there have been times this season where we have been royally exposed at the back. And Manchester City have got more than enough quality attacking players in order to instigate another Chelsea defensive collapse. However, been very confident watching Frank Lampard's Chelsea recently. Even at the back, the Zuma Tomori partnership has been wonderful. We'll go into who I think it's going to start in my match preview tomorrow evening. But I do feel as though Frank Lampard's Chelsea are playing so well away from home. We've won six in a row in the league. City have got defensive worries again. No Bernardo Silva. So I do think Chelsea can get something from this game. A win would be absolutely incredible. But there's definitely going to be goals. And I'm going to go with a very bold prediction here. Man City 3, Chelsea 3. Three. I think there's going to be so many goals in this game. I think it's going to be brilliant to watch. I think we will concede because City are so good going forward. But then again, so are we. 3-3 at the Etihad. More to come from that tomorrow in the preview. Sunday's game at Bramall Lane, Sheffield United versus Manchester United. I'm not going to lie, I've said to you guys before that I've got a soft spot for Newcastle. I'm also slowly building a little soft spot this season for Sheffield United. I love the way they play football. I love how there's not really any standout big names. They're just a very well organised team and they're very difficult to beat. Manchester United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer may well be looking over his shoulder now to see if Maurizio Pochettino is going to be knocking on the door. Although I guess his desk is probably like in front of the door. So he's probably just looking towards the door as opposed to over his shoulder at the window. Maybe he's looking to see if he turns up in the car park. Who knows? But Solskjaer is still under pressure at Man United. Their form recently has got a lot better. They had that win in the Carabao Cup against Chelsea as well that United fans would like me to acknowledge. But I do think this one is going to be very, very tough. They're currently behind Sheffield United in the table. Sheffield United are in fifth place and I'm going to go with another bold prediction here. Sheffield United won, Manchester United nil. I think they're going to do the same as they did to Arsenal. Be very tough to break down and get the win against one of the big boys again. And the final game this weekend is Monday night at Villa Park. Aston Villa versus Newcastle. Villa are a team who if you've watched every prediction video this season, I've often predicted Aston Villa to do quite well. They are currently sat in 17th place in the table with Newcastle United slowly Climbing up the table with only one defeat in their last five, up in 13th position. So Villa have lost their last three matches, but they're against Man City, Liverpool and away to Wolves in a derby. That was three very difficult fixtures. Before that, they did win two in a row. The win at Carrow Road, which is very impressive, and then beating Brighton at home late on. I do think there could be a couple of red cards in this game, which is just a random guess from me and a random prediction. We'll see next week if I got that right. Aston Villa 2. Newcastle won to round off this very exciting week of Premier League football. Any week of Premier League football is exciting. There's always talking points whether there's a really big fixture or not. This week we've got new managers, we've got sackings to get over, and we've got the small matter of Pep Guardiola versus Frank Lampard. It's such an exciting game. I'm going to be at the game. And then, of course, on Saturday, the Man City versus Chelsea match vlog will be out around 8.30, 9 o'clock after the game is finished. Hit the like button if you enjoy these Premier League predictor videos. Well done to the people that did so well in the last game week, which is game week number 12. And I will catch you guys in the next video tomorrow. See you all later. Goodbye.